Hey guys, it's Frank, and welcome back to my channel. Today, I'm gonna to be sharing with you guys how I built my IT career living in Toronto. The big reason why I'm even making this video is kind of show you guys that whoever wants to break into tech without having a tech background can very well make that transition despite not even having a background in technology or any of the nerdy stuff. I did, in fact, graduate with an IT degree, but let me just tell you that it is by no means a mandatory requirement to transition. Having a degree in anything or even going to a college will certainly help, but for the most part, I would say it's your demeanor or even completing certifications from like top tech companies that will probably give you the big advantage when you're applying for any sort of tech jobs. Based on my cybersecurity video, looking at in the comment section that a lot of you guys kind of want to learn kind of my, my background, how I got into tech, how I broke into it, and I hope that by sharing my story, this can assist anyone that's also looking to, to make that transition. I also wanna thank everyone for hitting our milestone of 3,000 subscribers. It still blows my mind. And if you want to continue hearing the story, give this video a good old smash because I really appreciate it. And now, let's begin. It dates back to my university days when I moved to Toronto and I attended university in a business technology program, which was basically IT. I had no idea what this IT business program was all about. Like I made the decision to even choose this program on like some stupid decision when I was a kid, I used to play this game called MapleStory, like some of you guys may know. I quickly learned into my program that IT is a very vague term. There's like almost two ways of looking at it. There's like the normal everyday person who kind of thinks you're a subject matter expert in like fixing and diagnosing your TV, your computer. And then there's the other side of it where there's like the hardcore coder nerds who are like coding 24 seven. So for the most part, if you're not going into the computer science, the software engineering route, you probably just lean over to the first end of just general IT. And that's the area that like pretty much any person can go into. I seriously did not know what kind of jobs were lined up for me. Like I still remember maybe one course in my first year where we're all sitting down and our professor like showed a PowerPoint slide of like all the type of jobs that people usually end up with after upon graduation. And I just remember things like uh, a business analyst, uh, a project manager. I think everyone in the classroom, including myself, was all just like, I have no idea what a business analyst is or any of these system analyst positions are, but like the money is great. Needless to say, I wouldn't say going to university was mandatory for what I'm doing today. But however, I know based on just societal um, social norms, having a degree was probably what kind of gave people the trust to hire me. But I wouldn't say it was the mandatory thing that I absolutely needed to do my job today. Upon graduation, I was desperate to find any sort of job that wasn't even related to my program potentially because I was basically looking at my bank account and I still remember to this day having like maximum $5,000 in my bank account. And I was thinking to myself like, if I don't find a job in like the next two to three months, I basically have to move back home because I can't afford living here. I remember applying to like any sort of bank, any sort of job, um, administrative positions, because I just thought to myself like, you know, maybe I won't do anything IT related, which probably would be a waste of my, all the money I spent in university. But hey, maybe I can get into the company, uh, start up with like being a bank teller and I'll make my way up so that eventually I will do something that's related to my program. I was kind of forced to settle whatever comes to me. So I found an internship company that kind of bridges new graduates with more established companies. And in my mindset, I was like, you know, whatever, it's not the greatest because they basically pay you like just over minimum wage. I kind of just understood that beggars couldn't really be chooser and I just didn't have any sort of reasons why someone would pay me a full amount. If you're curious what my first year looked like, let me tell you, it was nothing IT related at all. Like they gave me the title of a quality assurance person, so a QA, and let me tell you the reality. The reality was I was taking screenshots of the website during testing stages and I was just going like, yep, this uh, promotion showed up. Because I was technically working for the internship company, I was labeled as like a contractor and maybe it was just more psychologic, but I was, because I was like 22 years of age at the time, I just remember coming into work and just never feeling like I fully fit in because everyone else was either you know a full-time employee that's been working there for a number of years. I just felt like I was always left out because here's all these like smart, Ivy League kids coming in and here I was kind of like the 
contractor person. I'd say after a year and a half of doing QA work, I found myself a permanent position in this company and I had no idea how I landed into it. Like I didn't even meet the director in person. Like I was hired over the phone, but I landed into sales and it was in this era of cloud and data center, which I had absolutely no concept. Actually, I remember the email that they wanted to chat with me and the position was called sales data center. And I remember just Googling like, what is a data center? Like, <laughs> like I had no idea what any of this stuff was. I had really no desire to go into sales, learn about cloud data center, all that sort of thing. My point of view was just securing any sort of full-time job so that I could basically stay in Toronto. At this point, I kind of felt like this was like my actual first IT related tech job because this was like something that was like, I was dealing with customers, clients that were like $100,000 deals. I soon realized that I was like the youngest person on this team. I was like 23 years of age, but nevertheless, I was like, why did they hire this? I kind of wanted to give myself the advantage. Like how could I differentiate myself? And that was by completing as many cloud certifications. So I thought to myself like, wait a sec, if I like learn all this and I will kind of have that advantage when I'm going to like customer calls, this is kind of like the key point of all of it. And it's to complete cloud certifications. Like I'm telling you, you could probably have an arts degree, have no sort of business IT background that you graduate from school from. So say you had an arts degree, in my opinion, complete as much cloud certifications as possible. They're all free, they're all online. It's only when you want to be certified and actually do the exam that you have to pay money, but that's like maybe like a hundred bucks comparison to like the thousands of dollars you would pay um, going to university. This brings us to where I am right now. And now I found myself into cybersecurity despite not having even a cybersecurity background. And this was, as some of you guys may know, I got into this after losing my corporate job. I didn't even want to even necessarily go back into the whole tech space. Like I gave YouTube a shot while you're watching me right now. I guess I was fortunate in the sense that I found work into cybersecurity and what really helped wasn't necessarily, I think my experience did help with being in cloud and data center, but I would also say the amount of certifications um, that I completed up to this point really stuck out to recruiters. If you don't have a tech background, literally do like boot camps, do certifications, network with the right people, and I'm telling you, you will find a tech job. You can knock on a hundred doors and you kind of just need that one door that will finally answer to you. And that's all it really takes in my opinion. Many of you guys have reached out of how I got into cybersecurity. And I know that I do have an IT background, but I don't have any sort of cybersecurity or security background at all. My manager at the time just gave me a shot, like truthfully. Now being in cybersecurity, having an IT background, I've been working for like a few years now. I will say that the right person with the right attitude who's willing to learn on the job that can prove in the interview that they are willing to do all that thing, that's the person that gets hired. Early on to my career, I was always focusing on like, man, I wish I went to like the Ivy League schools and all that sort of thing. And then now that I gained some experience, like no company even looks at like where you went to school, like for the most part, as long as you went to school, <laughs> like, you know, for the post-secondary part. They, were, they really just care about the experience portion. So if you got experience in anything, you can prove to your employer that you have experience. That's the winning hand. If there's one thing that I want you guys to take away from this video is understand that just because you don't have a tech background, you didn't go to school for technology or IT, don't let that be the reason why you don't think you can uh, transition and break into the tech industry. By this, I mean, if you actually have the willpower to break into tech, then you will do absolutely whatever you can do to finally get into it. Of course, there's some luck that goes into it, but what you're really trying to do is put yourself in a position to succeed by doing whatever it takes, whether that's doing certifications, networking with the right people, or just treating people the right way. Those are the things that will get you into it finally. So there you guys have it. That's my entire IT career story or my long version of tell me about yourself. If you guys have any questions, let me know in the comment section down below. And if you guys can do me a favor, hit that like button so I know to make more videos like this. Thank you so much for 3000 subscribers. And I guess I'll see you guys all in the next one. Peace.